a professor at Georgia State. His name is uh, Tom Stanley. He wrote a book about uh, millionaires, which um, required that he did a research project, and he spoke to 2,000 of them. None of them are in my neighborhood. But um, he found out one thing that was consistent about all of them. Any ideas of what that was? Besides being born rich or something? Yeah. <laughs> In a big network. Exactly. They had, uh, when he did this study, they had Rolodexes, and maybe me and three other people in this room remember what a Rolodex is. It's this giant round thing with cards in it. Now we've got really done. So um, you want to start building, I'm sure you're all on Facebook, I'm even on Facebook, but you want to have a professional connection with people, and LinkedIn is the tool for that. So all you folks, that are um, not students. Mm -hmm. How many of you use LinkedIn? <coughs> oh, even the students. Awesome. It's important. And now is your chance. Tonight will be the beginning, if you haven't done that, of building your profile and building your contacts. What else should we plan for? Okay. I'm not so sure about um, how many of you students have business cards? You are way ahead of the game. That's awesome. All right, so before there were business cards, there were things called calling cards. And, um, but they really had the same purpose. They were um, handing out a business card, tells people your name, and um, best of all, it helps people like myself with an unusual name. That everybody calls Jane or Janice or Janet um, to get it right because they've got it in front of them. There's an A at the end of it, not an E. Um, or those of you that might have last names that is, there are eight letters long and with only one vowel. It helps people to have something in front of you because nobody wants to pronounce your name wrong. And most importantly, your card gives them a way to get in contact with you later if they want to connect with you on LinkedIn or they want to talk to you about something. So um, if you have business cards, the hard part is that um, for the women mostly, None of our clothes come with pockets. And even if we have pockets in our suits, they're like this deep. I mean, it, it's so unfair. Whereas you guys, you know, you got all those like secret pockets and your jackets and all that stuff. So uh, you got to think about it. If you have business cards, where are you going to put them? And then you want to make sure that your business cards are in one spot and the people who you should take are in another spot because I don't know what's ever happened to you, but I've reached into my purse or my wallet and I've handed out a business card to someone who wanted it. And they'd say, well, Michael, I, I didn't know your name was Jenna. And I've given them someone else. So the whole business card thing, you want to be really thoughtful about it. And I think it's a great idea to have calling cards. Okay. This is the hard part for a lot of people. You gotta have something to say after you've had that great high impact friendly conversation. You gotta have some small talk. You have to be able to ask questions to people. Um, I suggest, I'm a, I'm a uh, voracious reader, and I read all sorts of crazy things from, you know, like automotive today to, you know, Kant. And whenever I read something that I think is really cool, I'm a clip and collector, so I'll, um, you know, copy it, which is probably, I'm sure, against every copyright law there is, and I'll throw it in a hole. Um, there's also some great, um, websites that you can get. I don't know. Does anyone here subscribe to the Daily Skim? Ever heard of it? It's very cool. You got it? So, I mean, it's great. So, you wake up every morning. It's a one page um, synopsis of everything that's happened in the last 24 hours that you need to know about. And it's very short. It's a sentence, it's a paragraph, and it's really very funny, too. It's sort of a little irreverent. So, there's that. The Washington Post puts out a um, most read stories that you can subscribe to. Those are actually the articles. And where you can just pick up the newspaper and look through it. So I did a couple of, I looked at my, I looked at my things from today. And um, here's some conversation starters for you. So the New England Patriots, that everybody has some sort of an opinion about, have lost um, Julian Edelman and Dion Lewis. So what do you think? How much many more people can they lose and then they'll stop winning? 
sports and you can make it fun. Uh, also, today uh, I read that Marriott purchased Starwood, um, which so now we have 5,500 hotel rooms all under one company. What do you think that's going to do to hotel prices? I mean, it's just a way to ask a question and get things going. Or, oh my god, what about my Starwood homes? Am I going to lose them? So plan ahead. Think about things and have a couple of things to say. All right, so name tag on the right. Everybody got on the right? Oh. Here's why. <laughs> so, so Dr. Trader and I had a little bit of a discussion about that, but I did, I did research on it, and he's absolutely right, because um, like something like 89% of Americans are right-handed. So if you go to shake hands with someone, and it's on the right, it's easy to take a look at it. Handshakes. All right, so just like the business card is our exchange in business, a handshake is the American way of greeting in, in, in business meetings. And a firm class is good. We want to have a nice, firm handshake. Um, and you should practice your handshake. Oh, here we go. You can try it a few times. Let's see. Oh, this is kind of great. Really good. So far, there are no jellyfish. So a jellyfish is like this. You don't want that. That little one, you know, you can't make it in there and you only get like three fingers. And you know the people that you go to shake hands with them and you feel like they're can't just say advice? You don't want that either. So it's got to be firm. Um, there's also some really interesting things about the covered handshake. <laughs> Which I used to think was really, I thought, this is like the business hug, you know? <laughs> and um, I, I did some, you know, I, I found out after doing, you know, Google is a wonderful thing. So someone said, check out President George Bush, the younger one, so, and put his name in with handshake. And so I did that, and man, so he was notorious for doing the covered handshake and got all sorts of criticism about it because it was showed that he was domineering. <laughs> so, who knew? So, be careful about your handshake. So, a lot of networking events that you go to, there's tables. Um, you can't sit down, because you can't work your room on your tush. You gotta be up, you gotta be meeting people. A couple of tips and techniques. Where should I stand? All right, so, if you can get on the greeting committee or the name tag committee, that's great. But not everybody can do that. So when you go in the room, and tonight we have a really sort of an interesting room, so it'll take some real reconnaissance. You gotta stake it out. Stand tall, don't stand in the doorway, take a deep breath, and inside. And as you're going inside, look around, see what the traffic patterns are. Where's the food? Where's the alcohol? And if it's being passed, which it is in a lot of cases, there's no alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Find the biggest traffic pattern, and that's where you should plant yourself because the, that's your best opportunity to approach other people as they're coming by or to have people approach you. So, um, buddy system. How many people here came with other people? You all got buddies. Okay. Great. You know why it's good to have a buddy? Um, the good news is that your buddies know people that you don't know. So you can help each other by introducing um, your buddies to each other's you know, associates. But after you do that, split up. Because it's a crunch. Because what will happen is two of you will start talking about what you're gonna do for Thanksgiving or what you did last night or just a myriad of things. And it's two people in a really close conversation and it makes it very hard for people to approach you. So meet, meet your buddies at the end of the night, compare notes, see who made their five, and who did better. Um, good people to look for in the room when we're in there are people by themselves, because they're just dying. You know, they didn't come with anyone. I didn't have a buddy. Please take pity on me. And um, they're, they're, they're the easiest to approach, because they want to be engaged in conversation and talk to someone. So look for the person who's solo. Um, another good indication is 
three or more people is allowed for breaking and entering because they're not having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. They're already a group. So look for larger groups and work your way in. Best opening lines, really the, you know, I can't, I mean, if, if we didn't drive here, I did. Um, and I actually found the parking lot, thank you, Dr. Trainer. and there was one parking space left. Uh, so you can talk about the traffic, how you got there, you can talk about the facility, you can talk about the location, but something, ask questions, as long as you're upbeat and positive. If you're in front of something, say something. After you've made your great self-introduction, get the conversation started. Um, the graceful exit. Now, buddies might be good for this, because if you guys have some sort of a signal or something, you know, if you're stuck with someone and you just and you can't decide, you can't say another word, and you don't know how to get out of it, that could be a good, you know, have a buddy for that. But the best thing to do is to just be polite. Thank people, tell them it was great meeting them, you really enjoyed it, you appreciate the time that they spent with you, and um, you hope to see them again. The graceful exit. So if you are, if you come to one of these things, there's gonna be, I understand there's gonna be like really great food. So um, you probably don't wanna eat a lot of food to begin with, because think about the handshake, think about exchanging or asking for a business card, we got a lot of things going on if you've got like a stuffed mushroom cap in this hand. Here's the thing about all these events, everybody over orders. They absolutely over order. And I promise you, near the end of the event, you'll be able to go and have a wild time with all the great food that there is going to be here. Okay. The Ten Commandments of Connecting. <coughs> Sort of, this is my big, you know, this is the crescendo here. <laughs> Sorry about um, Have a great attitude, show up, and prepare. So let's think of the things that we talked about. Having a really positive attitude, being excited about this, planning a self-introduction, um, having some conversation things, having your car smiling, good solid handshake, and go. A lot of times I, I, I've been to so many of these, things in my career, you know, you think, oh God, I'm gonna go again. Well, you know, and you really sort of psych yourself out, but you have gotta go. And once you go there, you have a positive attitude. It's always fun. You always meet someone really interesting and someone that you didn't think you were gonna meet. And I, I made, I've gotten jobs, I've gotten business, I've made lifelong friends. So go to these things, even if it's hard. Even if all you can muster is to meet two or three people, just go, because that's two or three more that you met that you didn't know before. Um, I've given you a lot of ideas. Some of them you think, oh, I, can't, I could never do that. You can't do that. But try something. Think of a couple of things that we talked about tonight that feel comfortable for you, that you can do. And make a commitment to yourself that you're going to try them. Whatever that is, whether it's standing in the right place in the room, or reading someone's name tag, or having a good self-introduction, something that feels okay to you. And don't take, don't, don't, don't take, don't wait. This the reward for meeting all these people belongs to no one. There's no grade, I don't think, you're gonna give me a grade tonight for this? Oh, I'm giving a grade. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kill Joe. But the reward is that you're gonna meet people and that you're gonna get more comfortable. Um, treat everybody nicely. You're not going to like everyone you meet. You're not going to have this wonderful connection with every single person. But treat everyone. Remember your matters. Um, three E's, effort, energy, and enthusiasm. Don't be late. Don't leave too early. Don't drink too much. Don't forage on the food. Just say, <laughs> keep it right. Dress appropriately what looks like everybody did. Everyone really made an effort. You all look pretty nice. Very nice. And then remember to be courteous and to show people by listening and good eye contact that you really care about what they're saying and that you're happy to have met them. Um, I know, you know everybody's got a little bit of charm. Use it tonight. And then be brave. Be bold. Have a little bit of chutzpah. Just get out there and approach and be approachable. And then lastly, bring your sense of humor because this is fun. It really is. 